talking about an overview of the work. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Herman. I'm the Deputy Director of Community Engagement at the T, and I'm the moderator for tonight's meeting. We appreciate you joining us for tonight. Tonight's meeting is to share information and receive feedback on the MBTA's 2024 Track Improvement Program. Selena Martin, our Deputy Director of Track Improvement, as well as Laurel Singer, our Deputy Director of Track Improvement, will give a presentation, and we ask that you please hold all comments until the end of the presentation. And finally, we have this meeting planned to go into 8.30 this evening. During this presentation, we're gonna be talking about an overview of the work, the program benefits, what to expect during construction, our upcoming community open house events, and our project contact information. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few meeting controls for folks who are not familiar with Zoom. And I'd also like to let you know, as you all may have already been aware, that the meeting is being recorded. Next slide, please. Going into language accessibility, we offer interpretation during this meeting. In your meeting webinar controls, you'll click the interpretation. That's a small globe icon and click the language that you'd like to hear. For tonight's meeting, we'll have interpretation in Spanish, Haitian Creole, Portuguese, and Simplified Chinese. And you'll notice this globe icon right at the bottom of the screen. So you can select English in the drop-down menu if you want to re remain in the English room. And the same applies to any other language options that um, you feel comfortable with. Next slide, please. I'd also like to go into our diversity and civil rights. All MBTA activities, including public meetings, are free of discrimination. The MBTA complies with all federal and state civil rights requirements preventing discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, limited English proficiency, and additional protected characteristics. We welcome the diversity from across our entire service area. And if you have any questions or concern, we ask that you visit our website linked here or to reach out to the Office of Diversity and Civil Rights. Next slide, please. We'd also like to let you know about our closed captioning feature. You can click closed caption to start viewing the closed captioning. You can click and drag the closed captioning to move its position in the meeting window. And to adjust the caption side, we ask that you click the upward arrow next to start videos or stop video, click the video settings and accessibility, and then move the slider to adjust the caption size. Um, before I get into the technical questions, I'd also like to let you know that we have ASL interpretation as well in the room. Jess Carter and Brenna Rainey are here. If you'd like to view the ASL interpreter at all times, keep your view settings in gallery mode. Should that be the default setting anyway for you? And you can change this by clicking the button that says gallery mode in the top right of your screen. Our interpreters will also be pinned. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me or uh, Giovanni Gonzalez in this room and we'll be able to assist you. If you have any technical question at all, just feel free to reach out to me or Giovanni, our technical assistants. You'll also see another name here, William Parent, and we'll be able to assist you. Next slide. I'll now transfer this over to Selena Martin, who will go over the overview of the work. Hi, Ashley, it's Laurel. I'll take over slides seven through 10. My name is Laurel Singer, Deputy Director of the Track Improvements Program. I'm gonna cover the slides on the overview of the program and what we have planned for calendar year 2024. Um, our Track Improvement Program, which is sometimes used, uh, we sometimes use the acronym TIP or TIP, uh, stood up at the end of 2023 to meet the GM's commitment towards the elimination of all existing transit track related speed restrictions and continued improvements towards state of good repair. Sense TIP has already begun rebuilding infrastructure and has planned upcoming work throughout the 2024 calendar year across all lines of the system, uh, including red line, orange line, blue line, and green line. Um, during our planned shutdowns, which we're calling diversions or surges, we also invite other projects on and off track to make improvements to the right of way and stations. We include um, inspections, engineering inspections, station maintenance, repairs, cleaning, painting, um, lighting upgrades. We've been able to partner with MassDOT, uh, public utilities, developers, providing them with unhindered access to our right of way. 
um, allowing them to reduce their project durations and increase worker safety. The next slide will take a look at the program's right of way infrastructure. Um, this slide gives a qualitative overview of the transit system infrastructure, the number of speed restrictions, approximate feet of track, um, number of signals, stations, and um, approximate weekly, weekday ridership counts. This is shown system-wide and by line. Um, as of mid-January, which I believe these numbers correlate to January 15th, 2024, um, our speed restrictions have reduced to 138. We have 53 for red line, 37 for orange line, 14 for blue, 34 for green line. Um, we've since this January 15th date also completed two additional diversions. This would further reduce the speed restrictions that are listed here um, and further improve our state of good repair, service, and safety. Um, it's also important to note that while TIP has planned diversions, MBTA Maintenance Away's operating department always has and will continue through 2024 and beyond to um, perform work that addresses track improvement priorities. So the next slide breaks out our TIP plan diversions. Yep, by segment, perfect. On the right, we have the MBTA spider map. Um, of the transit system with segments numbered and bubbled. Kind of hard to see, but these numbers do correlate to this table on the left. These are the approximate limits of our TIP planned surges. Towards the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, Selena and I successfully managed Red Line Ashmont Mattapan, Green Line D Branch, and the Green Line Central Tunnel, which included the Green Branch. Those three diversions were able to clear all the existing speed restrictions, which is why you're not seeing bubbles around the E branch, the Mattapan, the Ashmont, and um, part of the D branch. So this is a little bit newer than the slide that you saw before, but also still um, a little dated from where we are today. The next slide. So this correlates again with these numbered surges. What you'll see here is that in 2024, we plan for each segment, including information on the theoretical trip delays um, as a result of the speed restriction and the limited um, duration of, sorry, the estimated duration of each plan diversion. Um, this was the plan back in November. You can see that date down at the bottom. Um, and I keep saying plan. For the most part, not much has changed, but there is the possibility that the work limits, the start date, the end dates, and the durations could shift slightly, um, but there really shouldn't be major changes to what you see here. And this is something that you can find online. Um, also, these segments sometimes uh, are alternative service, including our shuttle limits may extend beyond the segments. Uh, so that's something that's important to note. Um, here, you'll see the months at the top, and you may have noticed that we've passed GL2, Green Line, North Station to Kenmore, Heath Babcock, most recently, um, Red Line 1, Red Line Alewife to Harvard. Both of those successfully cleared all the speed restrictions that were identified. Um, we are currently running a Green Line 3, Green Line Copley to Cleveland Circle, Babcock, Brookline Hills. We're calling this one the Green Line Copley to Portals Diversion. That one started yesterday, February 20th. And uh, we have a planned return to service Saturday, March 9th. Um, we're also gearing up for Orange Line 4, OL4, North Station to Jackson Square beginning March 18th. With that, I will hand you off to Selena. Thank you, Laurel. So um, as Laurel mentioned, we did recently complete the Life 2 Harvard surge. Um, February 5th through the 14th. Uh, some of the highlights, we were able to remove eight speed restrictions between Alwife and Harvard. Uh, that work included 2,500 feet of rail signal work. We had some tunnel inspections, station inspections, repairs, and cleanings, improvements to the station security system as well. Uh, this work meant that the riders would have a better experience with reliable trip times and fewer unplanned service disruptions through the area. 
and a safer ride as a whole um, as a result of this project. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as mentioned before, um, we just started our green line search, uh, Copley to Portals. We go from Copley to Babcock on the B line, Cleveland Circle on the C line, and Brookline Hills on the D line. That started on February 20th, and the service will resume on Saturday, March 8th. Our goal is to remove nine speed restrictions through this area. Uh, we're replacing special track work over a mile of track, approximately 1,200 ties, and tamping and aligning about two miles of track. At all of the stations, we're performing maintenance and repairs, such as painting, um, improving the benches, concrete repairs, floor repairs, stair tread replacement, handrail replacement, ceiling panel removals, waste receptacle replacement, plumbing, HVAC maintenance, inspection activities, as well as security upgrades. Um, next slide, please. So this shows the service impacts to the ride. So we um, are providing a shuttle service between Copley and Babcock on the B-Line, Copley and Cleveland Circle on the C-Line, and Copley and Brookline Hills on the D-Line. We are strongly encouraging riders to uh, use the orange line at Back Bay to travel through the core. Um, the shuttle service is free and accessible. Shuttle buses are available for riders. The buses are approximately every 46 minutes on the weekdays and every five to eight minutes on the weekends. We do have transit ambassadors at all the stations. Uh, they wear the red shirts that are available to assist riders. Uh, if you have any questions as you are looking, if you are looking for the shuttle service. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then next month, we are working on the orange line between North Station and Jackson Square, March 18th through the 21st. So service will resume on the 22nd. Uh, we intend to remove a total of five speed restrictions. And through this area, we're gonna be replacing a mile of track, approximately 1300 ties, and tamping and aligning about two miles of track. Um, during all the surges, we are upgrading our stations, uh, completing maintenance and repairs, such as painting, um, improving the benches, concrete repairs, floor, stair, tread replacement, handrail replacement, um, and anything else that is needed to make the stations a safer and more invite, uh, inviting place to be as you're waiting for your trains. Um, the alternative service impacts for that will be provided uh, as we get closer to the surge date. Next slide, please. Uh, so overall, our program is looking to uh, improve the travel time and the station areas um, throughout our system. Uh, we should be improving approximately 90 minutes of travel time for our riders, which is uh, very significant to save everybody time on their daily commutes. Uh, it'll, this program is geared towards removing speed restrictions, but also doing some state of good repair work for a safer and more reliable system. And um, we are trying to improve the rider experience through our station enhancements and um, such as light painting, cleaning, uh, repairing the lighting fixtures, vegetation removal, and the removal of tripping hazards, and completing accessibility improvements where we can. Next slide, please. Uh, so during construction, um, our work is com being completed 24 hours a day. Uh, we have multiple shifts going around the clock with multiple contractors in each area trying to complete as much work as possible during each of these shutdowns. Um, we have main track contractors in addition to many station contractors who are improving um, the other aspects of our infrastructure. 
Uh, we are aiming to mitigate the noise levels where possible through noise dampening blankets, low impact backup alarms and noise monitoring. And there is a hotline available for public to report noise and other construction related issues will also be available. Um, during each individual surge, specific wayfinding signage and additional transit ambassadors will be deployed to assist the riders to navigate the free alternative shuttle service. Next slide, please. And um, Ashley, you can uh, speak on the upcoming community engagement events. Thank you, Selena and Laurel. We also want to hear from you and we want to share more information to you about this program. We'll have open houses as well as station pop-ups. Our meeting that we had today is listed as well as our upcoming meeting again on Zoom. That will be on March 7th. Then again on April 11th, we'll be at Boston Public Library. On May 14th, we'll be at Mattapan Public Library. And then we'll also be at English High School. For the station pop-ups, we will have station pop-ups in Alewife, Ruggles, Malden Center, Kenmore, Quincy Center, and Park Street. So be on the lookout for us. We'll be here and we're excited to see you. Next slide, please. We also want to tell you that we have resources available for you as well. Um, this service impact slide, um, one moment. Okay, it showed up for me now, sorry about that. Um, so we also wanna let you know that we have a writer's guide for you that's available. There will be multiple Green Line branch closures from Tuesday, February 20th through Friday, March 8th. Um, and travel alternatives during this time will include a combination of free accessible shuttle buses and fare free buses and commuter rail options. Transit ambassadors and other MBTA staff will be available to assist all the riders throughout the Green Line. And we ask that you plan ahead of time just in case for extra travel time during these closures. You can learn more about these closures and get a comprehensive guide to help you plan your next trip on mbta.com slash GL Writers Guide. Next slide, please. And with that, we also ask you to contact us. You can contact us through email at publicengagement at mbta.com, through phone at 617-222-3030, or through our web, where you can learn more about the track improvement program in general. And with that, we'll now open it up to Q&A. To make a comment, you must virtually, virtually raise your hand. And so to do this on the computer, you can press Alt-Y or click the raise hand button under the participants tab at the center of your screen. On a mobile device, you can tap the raise hand button in the bottom center of your screen. And on the phone, you can dial star nine. So once you raise your hand, you'll be added to a queue with others who have raised their hand. And I'll call on folks first come first serve. And, it, and when it's your turn to speak, I'll say your name or the last four digits of your phone number, whatever shows up. And I'll let you know that I'm unmuting you. If you are on a computer or mobile device, a, bo a box will pop up in the center of your screen and you'll need to confirm that you'd like to be unmuted before you begin speaking. So if you're on the phone, an automated recording will let you know that you're unmuted and then you can speak as soon as that recording finishes for the folks that are on the phone. And once you're unmuted, everyone in the meeting can hear you. So before you make your comment, please state your name, any organizational affiliation and limit all of your comments to no more than two minutes. And with that, I am opening up the screen for anyone to provide questions or comments in the Q&A. Um, we have both virtual and the chat option where you can place it in the chat, or as I mentioned, you can raise your hand. We'll be recording all, and I'll be stating it out loud if it's in the chat. Thank you, and let's begin. I don't see any hands raised so far. Does this mean nobody has any questions? Anything in the chat? I don't see anything in the chat either. Ashley, we have a Linda Freeman who has their hand up. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Linda. I just asked for you to mute and thank you, Hio, for letting me know. Linda, the floor uh, is yours. 
Um, it's been a while since I've been on the Orange Line. I had the pleasure of getting on it this afternoon, going from where? From Haymarket? Yeah, Haymarket back up to Jackson. And I noticed the difference from a month ago that um, it's smoother. But when you got to the sl slow zone, um, it's better. It's smoother in the slow zone as well. So by the time we, I reached Jackson, it was good. Thank you. Thank you so much for that comment, Linda. We really appreciate it. and happy to know that your ride is smoother. That's important to us. Okay, Chloe, your hand is raised. I'm going to unmute you now, okay? Chloe, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm actually at a, I'm a student at Boston University. And uh, so we, we take the green line a lot. So uh, I just don't know if, if there was any kind of uh, reimbursements for people who get like the T passes or um, any kind of other options for them if they've, if they bought it, because I know there usually is a lot of people who take the tea to get to class. Thank you for that question. We do not have reimbursement at this time for that, but if you have specific questions about your route, um, especially on the green line right now, we do have a writer's guide available. Um, and I'm also happy to answer any questions that you have. I'll put my information in the chat for us to be in touch. And I'm happy to support you with any other questions that you have in regards to that. Thank you so much. Of course, after this meeting, I'll also be taking the shuttle. Okay. Right now. Okay, it looks like we have a question in the chat. Great work so far. When you say including plumbing, does that include the drains that run under the track bed? I understand the pumps near Copley Square are in rough shape. That's the first question and there are others, but we'll share the first one. Um, yes, so that would include um, drains that do run under the track bed. Uh, we have been working through um, a lot of water uh, issues as we are making these track improvements. Perfect, thank you, Selena. The next question is, how much less disruption to service would be possible with an increased budget for the project? Um, I'm not sure an increased budget would help the disruption. Uh, Laurel, you can correct me if you have a different opinion, um, but we need to shut down the tracks in order to complete the work. So I don't, I don't think um, an increased budget would help. Uh, with the shuttles, I uh, could be wrong. Are the exhaust fans being serviced during this project? I understand they're the CIP for this PO704. Um, they're not part of this project. It's possible they would be working as a piggyback and taking advantage of the surge, but I am not aware of that project that you're referring to. Yeah, I'd agree with Selena. I don't think we've had any opportunity projects join us for um, the exhaust fans. We do have those running sometimes during the surges to help with ventilation. Um, as far as servicing, they are regularly serviced through the operating budget. There's um, documentation that can be available. Um, but the CIP for P0704 is not operating funding, that is capital funding, and would not go towards servicing tunnel ventilation.
And last question from Evan, are the insulators on the power system being cleaned during this project? Um, they are not part of this track program, um, but if they, um, they can piggyback onto the project and take advantage of the system being shut down, but I'm not aware of the um, insulators on the power system being cleaned uh, at this time. Anna, what do you think about insulators for the third rail? Thank you for that. And Chloe, I just would like to let you know that um, diversions are free in the sense that the commuter rail is fare free between Lansdowne, Back Bay, and South Station for the Green Line currently, and no fares will be collected collected, excuse me, from riders traveling west from Babcock Street. Um, and the 57 bus is also free between Kenmore and Packard's Corner for the B line. Um, and then for the D line, it's similar. And then for the E line, Back Bay Station is fare free um, through the Orange Line, which is a good alternative. And then the nine and 39 bus stops as well are. So let me just send you, this link um, so that you can have more information on that. So there are fair free options for you to move around during this diversion right now. And I will share this now to you and also give you my email. Okay. There's a comment from Morgan. I faced some significant service delays on the red line, particularly during rush hour in the evening. When the trains pull up, they often include cars on that, cars on that are completely out of service. This actually leads to some dangerous crowding both on platforms and getting into cars. Is this a situation that you think may be resulting from ongoing tip work? Um, for when we have red line surges uh, in the areas where uh, the trains are um, not running, we'll have shuttles and the vehicles, um, for example, we just had the Harvard to Alewife surge. We had the shuttle between Harvard and Alewife. Um, and I, my understanding is some of the trains had a heavier impact getting on at Harvard. Um, And trains out of service would not have, uh, would not be a result of our ongoing tip work. Okay, thank you for that. Do we have any other questions or comments? I don't see any more hand. Oh, um, Seth. I'm asking to unmute now, one moment. Hi, thanks. Um, Seth Gadvois, I'm a transportation attorney from Conservation Law Foundation. I have a few questions that I hope to ask, but can certainly yield um, if other questions arise during that time. Um, so thanks for having this event um, and giving this presentation. Looking forward to attending future events. Um, with the funding for this, uh, this year's project, is this being funded by any particular source? Is this coming out of operations budget, capital budget? Um, I asked that second part because it sounded a second ago, like, uh, when responding to Evan's question about the fans, that there may have been an operated operations capital budget, um, connection there. Um, and will this be, how will this be reflected in the upcoming budget and the CIP?
and if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this program is entirely capital funding. Yeah, I would agree that uh, the, this our program is capital funding. Uh, some of the operating budgets may be used for the piggyback work, but our specific project is capital. Okay, so when you say the piggyback work, you mean the additional improvements that are happening while the tracks are being repaired? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Uh, with some of those additional station improvements, are there any planned improvements for the escalators or elevators along any of the lines that you know of right now? For the projects that we've done so far, the diversions and surges, we have not had work related to escalators or elevators as part of our program or that have applied as part of opportunity projects. Okay, great. Thank you. For the buses that are being used for the diverted routes, was there any emissions calculations done to examine the impacts of moving service from an electric uh, heavy or light rail service to diesel buses over the course of this year? Good question. Not that I'm aware of. Selena, do you know? Uh, I'm not aware of that analysis being calculated. And I've got just a couple more, if that's okay. I, I'm happy to yield to Evan. I've seen a couple more pop up. Um, Seth, um, you can continue to ask a question. And then you can ask one more question. I'll go back to Evan and then I'll come back to you after. Thank you, Ashley. I've, I have met you at a prior community event. Love the way you run things. Thank you for all your work. Um, the, I know that like we're looking at a plan um, and that plans can change, but we've had a rough version of that calendar since November. Are there any plans to disperse the full year calendar at stations across the board? I keep coming into just general people who are finding out about short term announcements um, or like the diversion about to happen. And I know that comms is a huge part of this, but is there any reasonable way to have the full calendar across all lines, especially because certain green line riders may have orange line as a regular part of their commute. So they may think, oh, we're done with the green line stuff and then hit the orange stuff later in the year or things like that. And that's a good comment, Seth. That's why we try to talk about more than just the line that we're dealing with currently during this presentation. Um, I don't know of any current plans, Selena. I don't know if you have any know of any current plans to have them out in the station, but it's it's a good comment that we could pass along to um, our signage team. Thank you, Laurel. Thank you, Selena. Seth, keep your hand raised. I'll come back to you. Evan, um, we have a question that says, will the leaks in the tunnel ceiling be repaired during this project? For example, I understand the blue and green line tunnels are in rough shape. So the green line tunnels, we did some leak repairs that we were able to. Um, there is still more repairs to be done, but we have been making progress in repairing the tunnels and we are also completing tunnel inspections as we can on all the lines to make sure that our tunnels are uh, structurally sound and uh, mitigating leaks as we can. And then a supplement to that about improvements and repairs, will this be included in this project for the emergency exits too? For the emergency exits, uh, I'm not aware of any repairs specifically at this time. Um, that would be a piggyback project because our program is focused on the track improvements. We'll take this down and ask and we can get back to you. Evan, if you want, you can send your email to tech support here in this chat. We also have your email if you already RSVP'd. So we'll get back to you with a response to that. Okay, 
I am going to now unmute you again, Seth. The floor is yours. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let me lower my hand. With the shuttle buses, uh, two questions on that. Are there any, and I'm sure that if they are, they're expensive, and I know that we have regular people, um, like a regular service that the T likes to work with for diversions, but are electric buses possible for any of those diversions? And to what extent across the board are these buses ADA accessible with the necessary lifts or other equipment? Um, for electric buses, I am not sure we can reach out to our alternative service team on their availability. Um, on the accessibility shuttles, we if the specific bus uh, is not accessible, we do have accessible vans specifically to meet any accessible needs. Are those running at a regular service rate like the uh, bus shuttles are? Yes. Yeah, okay. the um, accessible vans are running at a regular rate. And then two more questions, and I'll leave you alone. Um, earlier in the presentation, there was a slide about a noise hotline that will be up and running. Do we have any idea on when that might be up and online? Uh, I think it's online. We can double check, though. I thought it was running. It's already, are you experiencing it not running right now at this time when you called? No, I, I hadn't seen that that was going to be something that was going on. And I was taking notes in the presentation earlier. And I thought that that slide said that there will be a noise. Oh, no, it's already up and running. Okay. Um, that scared me for a second. I'm like, oh, I've, we've been receiving calls. What happened? But yes, it's already up and running. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then last question, is there to what extent are you all and this may not be your direct team but is the t trying to track ridership numbers during this we are not as part of the track improvement program i don't know if other departments are as seth i don't know the answer to that but um i can find out and email you back with that thank you i appreciate it of course. and thank you all for the great work you're doing and including this presentation. I appreciate the floor to ask several uh, technical questions. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. We appreciate you too and value your presence in the community. Okay. All right, our next question we have is from Charles. Will the blue line shutdowns be happening before the final main Sumner tunnel full closure in the summertime? Yes, they will. Um, we are planning three days of early access uh, between Bowdoin and airport um, early April. And then uh, later in April, we are having the blue line shut down between airport and Wonderland from air, um, April 17th to the 28th. And that is our only blue main blue line shutdown for the system that we have currently planned, uh, trying to avoid the summer tunnel shutdown. And this is being coordinated with Mass DOT. Any more questions or comments? Okay, I'm gonna wait a few more seconds for anyone if you have any lingering questions. Going once, 
twice. A third time for those later questions that come up out of nowhere. No? Okay, we are set to end at 8.30, but if we don't have any more questions or comments, um, you can email me um, or call. I'll provide that information here. You can also contact my team at publicengagement at mbta.com, which I'll also place in the chat, and we'll be sure to answer any other questions that you have. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it, and we appreciate your time. Thank you, Ashley. Bye, everyone.